Welcome to Epicenter, the show which talks about the technologies, projects, and people driving decentralization and the blockchain revolution. I'm Friederike Ernst, and I'm here with Meher Roy. Today, we're speaking with David Schwartz and Jordi Bailina, the co-founders of Polygons and heads behind um, the Polygon ZKEVM. And we have so many questions. It's going to be a very meaty episode. But before we talk um, with Jordi and David about Polygon, let me tell you about our sponsor this week. Omni is your new favorite multi-chain mobile wallet. Omni supports more than 25 protocols, so you can manage all of your assets in one place. But what's really special about Omni is what you can do inside the wallet. Once you get yield, Omni allows you to get the best APYs with zero fees and three taps. Need to swap? Omni aggregates all major bridges and DEXs, so you can bridge and swap across all supported networks in one transaction directly in your wallet. Love NFTs? Omni offers the broadest NFT support of any wallet, so you can collect and manage your favorite NFTs across all chains, all in one place. Omni truly is the easiest way to use Web3 and is fully self-custodial, meaning you never have to trust anyone with your assets other than yourself. And they support Ledger. Give Omni a try at omni.app. David and Jody, it's, uh, it's such a pleasure to have you guys on. The pleasure, the pleasure is ours. Uh, thank you for inviting us. We are very happy to be here. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. This is one of the podcasts. You know, when I when I started in blockchain, this podcast already was there. So that's that's a, that's a honor to be here too. So that's thank you for for still being here. <laughs> thank you. This is our tenth year, so I think very few years have actually made it to ten years in blockchain. But uh, yeah, we're we're still around. <laughs> so Jody, you also have a super long Ethereum history. So I remember you telling me that you kind of entered the scene right around um, the entire the DAO situation and the hack, and you kind of joined the white hat hackers. Tell us about that. Well, that was a long time ago. <laughs> uh, for me, it looks like prehistoric, prehistorical times, but this is, was my, my, my introduction to blockchain. So I was uh, just learning, very excited about Ethereum at that point, very excited about the DAO and discovering the community, discovering the things that you could do in Ethereum. I was at that point, I was writing uh, 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 liquid democracy, smart contracts for the DAO. Well, I learned a lot, you know, I mainly learned uh, how this works at, at that time. And then all the, all the hack in the DAO happened. Uh, I was one of the persons that, uh, checked more of the code and was very involved at that point. So without, almost without even realizing, I just get involved in the white hacks. And, and this was my baptism in, in, in blockchain it was very, very, you know, very exciting times for me it was, it's a story, you know, we, I, I don't think it's the topic of this, of this interview, but it, for me, it was like a, a movie, you know, we just uh, being part of a movie and, and, you know, white hackers, the hackers try to attack the hacker, the software, the hard fork and then returning the phones. And well, yeah, I mean, it just, just was a, a, a fast learning on the, on the, on the space, but yeah, good moments at that point. Yeah. Try by fire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be a movie about this at some point. Uh, so who, 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 do you, who, do you, who, who do you think is going to be cast as Jody? Who's going to be? What? The Kausas? Who's going to be uh, cast as you? Oh, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. Richard, I don't know Richard, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, David. Um, what about you? You have you are super difficult to Google, by the way, because you have a very common name and also the same same name as the Ripple CTO. So um, your background to me comes com now comes to me as a complete surprise. You can tell me anything, and I believe it. Yeah, no, no. I I, I joined the space uh, five years ago. Jordi convinced me to to start together a project on identity, and we are still working on it. And more recently. Uh, we just uh, started the CKVM. Before that, it was a uh, Hermes network. Uh, we joined hands with Polygon uh, two years ago, and it was like a big experience. Now we are working together in the CKVM. I basically am uh, leading the, the project in terms of execution, the coordination of the team, the, the follow-up, and also the product side. So Jordi is doing the magic, and trying to make this happen in, the, in every other aspect. 
I'm in your boat. So I also I also try to make things happen in every other respect. And this is uh, it's a very hard job. So uh, with with all respect to Jody, but uh, yeah, David, don't don't undersell yourself here. So you guys co-founded um, the Hamas uh, network at the time. What 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 were you setting out to do with it? Well, we were just trying to scale. Um, Let's say uh, scale with uh, blockchains. So in this case, was uh, so the first uh, the first version of a Hermes was just an only payments uh, system, but was quite uh, good and scales uh, quite well. And this was the Hermes one. It was a very good uh, experience on there. And from there, we just uh, realized that the important was the scale Ethereum, and and we just uh, focus on the ZKVM since there. The story is that, so we were doing the, the identity project. So we were doing the identity project uh, at that point, and we were building a lot of zero knowledge technology and a lot of the technology there. So we, at that point, we realized that this technology was very useful also for scaling. Actually, actually we were trying to build a kind of a roll up for, for identity and say, okay, we can, we can also do a roll up for payments. You know, it's, it's something that's interesting and, uh, uh, to do. And then, uh, we started to do a kind of a proof of concept internally in a side project inside the team. And uh, we realized that this worked uh, quite well. And at some point, we just decided to, okay, let's uh, move gears and let's uh, focus on this for a, for a while. And, and yeah, that's when, that's how we built uh, Hermes One. Yeah, I would say that Hermes One was uh, an amazing experience for us also to you know, make use of this uh, CK technology. Jordi was uh, one of the pioneers in this uh, field, uh, creating tools like Circoms, NARJS, uh, that are today are very common and very used uh, across many teams. Uh, the Hermes 1.0 was payment network only, which was basically what uh, we feel it was possible at that moment. But uh, this field has evolved a lot. And um, two years ago, this, this CKVM seem like um, impossible and feasible. Other teams uh, already said that because our approach was very ambitious. Uh, you go for, for the, from the first step, building a payment network to the full, let's say, smart contract execution, it seemed like a big deal. And uh, we are super happy that today we are very close to launch the mainnet and everybody can see the testnet. So super exciting times, also hard, hard work be, behind this, uh, you can imagine. But uh, the story is that uh, we got there uh, by a lot, lot of uh, hard work and being ambitious and trusting that uh, along the way we will find solutions, which we can explain a little bit more, but uh, it happened. So very exciting times. What is ZKEVM? ZKEVM is mainly um, uh, scaling Ethereum. That means that uh, ZKVM is a rollup, is a layer two rollup that works exactly the same that the layer one rollup, that like exactly the same that Ethereum, but uh, instead of running on a layer one or instead of running in Ethereum, you are running in this uh, layer two. So it's a smart contract that emulates or that has this uh, chain by itself. And uh, we are just taking from layer one uh, the consensus. So the layer two does not include a consensus uh, mechanism. So we are leveraging on the layer one uh, consensus mechanism, but we are building a new layer, so a new system on top. And the difference will be mainly, it, sh it should be mainly the, 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 the throughput, the quantity of transactions that the network should accept and the, and the, and the, and, and the price. You know, if you, if you have more throughput, then the price should go low, yeah. That's the, that's the, that's the, the concept of the ZK EBM. So it's EBM is the Ethereum virtual machine and the ZK is just, uh, we are em emulating or we are running an Ethereum virtual machine with zero knowledge in a rollup. That's mainly what it is. I will add to this that uh, we are in the ZK EBM, you are basically changing the trust model. Um, we have this kind of layer two execution, uh, let's say blockchain. Uh, that's doing off-chain processing of Ethereum-like transactions. But here, instead of having a consensus protocol that provides the security to the users, we rely on the layer one security to verify some kind of validity proofs that are created into this layer two. And this layer, these validity proofs basically certify to users that the execution is correct according to the rules of Ethereum or the rules that the, this VM has. So the prover is the key 
that's a key element here because it's where all the trust you know of the users uh, are deposited because the the this prover is what the ck circuits enforces the behavior of the network if the network is behaving like according to the rules of ethereum then you get a proof otherwise you don't get the proof and this validity proof is kind of the the new model of trust and this enables to compress in some way you get a lot of transactions that are proven by a succinct a small proof and this is where the scalability happens cool so in a in a typical layer one if i as a let's say i as a business want to be sure that the, the current ledger is correct i have to run all of the transactions from uh, from basically zero or the first instant to now verify that all of the transactions were correct and the accounting was correct and then i come to the current state and then i know that over oh, the current state is correct in this case what what the yes, the essence of what you are developing is that you will have a network where the network can all you can almost imagine the network as emitting kind of certificates or proofs uh which attest to the fact that some current state so the, the state that has been reached currently came as a result of you know correct accounting done in history and that correct accounting is certified by by these zero knowledge proofs so i only need to uh process the certificates or the proofs which is much lighter than actually running all of the transactions in the history of that network exactly you explain it perfectly is it is it the case that you know when when ethereum launched um there was the ethereum network and then there there is was like ethereum virtual machine and of course the ethereum network used the ethereum virtual machine but the ethereum virtual machine is kind of like an abstract concept really that can that was adopted by other networks right so is it similar in your case as well that there is a zk evm network that you're trying to build but there is also a zk evm like some kind of abstract computational machine that you're building that can also be in the future used by other networks is is that right um, not exactly i would say so what we are doing here is so from conceptually we're just uh, um, copying emulating the ibm so we are just so what we are just so that what we are trying to solve is okay is you are doing the same in one thing and you are just doing in the ibm so from the user perspective there is nothing nothing else if we check internally and we check the architecture that we are using to build that it's a, like a kind of a double layer so there is so we have like a sub processor uh, we have a kind of a sub processor that's uh, well it's executing with a specific language and we are emulating or we are just uh, running the ibm so the program that emulates the ibm on top of this zk processor in the bottom but this is i would say this is more uh so it's more than in the architecture part it's not in the it's not the final it's not the final uh purpose it's not it's, it's not it's not the final idea this this is a private thing it's uh it's a specific processor to do a specific job in this case is emulate the 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 the, the ibm well yeah here there is uh, uh we could have other processors here and but but this is not a public process it's not a, it's not we don't plan to to people run programs for this processor uh, users to write for this processor so it's just a uh, it's a specific uh solution for having a zk vm zk roll up yeah basically uh the mission of polygon is scaling ethereum to bring it ethereum mainstream and this is what we are trying to build uh mimic uh, essentially what ethereum is doing so users doesn't have any friction the same thing with it with the pos so that we want to replicate this kind of experience for users uh, but with uh, the security of ethereum because we will be deploying a layer 2 but we are basically following ethereum if ethereum introduces new changes we will catch up as you all know there's different kinds of zk rollups there's also optimistic rollups rollups let's not talk about those for now so let's just concentrate on zk rollups 
and basically if you zoom out and kind of explain in uh, explain in like normal people terms how they differ my take on what the zkevm is would be um that the zkevm just transposes every opcode um that the evm has into a zk version of that opcode and that means it becomes trivial to kind of transpose any kind of smart contract that you already have um into the the smart contract that can be compiled by the zk evm because you just replace every opcode that you've used with um the equivalent um of the zk evm is that high level understanding correct yeah but it's it's not even that it's, there is not even that transposition you just can take a smart contract you don't even have to recompile and you just deploy you you just deploy this smart contract in the zkvm you don't need to have special compilers you don't need to have a special version of metamask you don't need to have a, a special version of harhat or you don't need to translate any of code in other of code you are just taking uh ethereum transactions you are just taking ethereum smart contract you're, you're just using the same way that you are using ethereum you are using the you are just uh, you just plug metamask in uh, to the zkvm and, and and you deploy there so it's it's it's, it's as easy as as easy as as direct as that and this is the magic is this easy this easiness uh on that this is the idea of a zkvm i mean that 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 sounds um uh I, I don't want to say straightforward, but it seems like a very natural approach, right? Seeing that you already have the EVM. You already said like 10 minutes or so ago um, that it was thought that this approach would be too hard, that it was inconceivable that this could be built within like a reasonable time scale. What were the limits or the challenges? I mean, I think we surpassed the limits. Yeah. Maybe uh, before that, we can go back to the previous point question is, uh, there are different approaches to CKBM. I don't think we can just say all are, are, all are the same. Um, Vitalik explained this very well in a recent post, or maybe it was like year, last year, but uh, there are different types. Types we are uh, targeting EVM equivalence, which was basically what Jordi was defining. So no friction for users. You are deploying the same thing that you do in Ethereum in our model. Uh, there are other approaches that were, let's say, started probably before we did, like uh, CKSing or Starware. They were doing kind of a building a VM which was more CK friendly, uh, which is basically uh, the internals of the of the engine of the CK prover is more simplified. Uh, let's say they are not supporting the same set of codes that we want to, to deliver. So you, the users need to uh, transform the code by recompiling in some way, or even in this the approach of Starware, they need to use a new language, or they also they have some kind of compilers and these kind of things. But uh, the, when we said it was difficult, I mean that uh, these teams started before and they felt this was the the approach that was feasible at that moment to build a let's say VM that was CK friendly. Uh, in some way, they felt that in, in terms of is is like this: the, the computation of proofs is a very intensive uh, calculation, and you need to prepare this uh, correctly so so you can be efficient. So they were following kind of a more simple strategies that paid, uh, let's say, in a theoretically better outcome in terms of feasibility of proof calculation for for this kind of um, processing of transactions. And we were following an approach which was more ambitious, that basically was EVM equivalence that anyone could use Ethereum as we have today. But it seemed more complex. The internals were more complex, and in fact, they are probably. Uh, since we are all the complexity we are avoiding for users, we are putting in the inside of the system. That's the general concept. Uh, so this is the reason why uh, we are so so uh, happy that we are able to deliver this uh, so soon, and it works because it seemed like a, impossible two years ago, and uh, today we are uh, uh, in a position that we are super happy to to go to be. Can you give us an idea of the challenges that kind of you needed to that you were up against in kind of building this 
more complex technology that kind of abstracts um, some of the complexities or most of the complexities away from the user? You can enumerate some of them, but for example, uh, uh, if you want ABM, for example, you want that the signatures are the same way. So you need to use CDSA the same way that Ethereum does. So that means that you need to do a circuit or you need to do a zero knowledge circuit that uh, validates uh, normal Ethereum signatures or Ketchax. You know, you need to also have a circuit that's, that emulates Ketchax. These are not, so CDSA or Ketchak is not something, it's not something that's uh, prepared for doing efficiently in the ZK. So we, we had to do, uh, invent and do things, uh, 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 just to, to, to optimize and to do that, that things faster. But other more, I would say other more trivial, let me tell you some other more trivial things. For example, the transactions in Ethereum are encoded with R RLP. Okay. So you need, we need an RLP uh, decoder inside the, inside the, inside the prover. Okay. And this is, it's it's a stupid if you do it in the normal processor, but doing in the in a EVM in a in a zk uh, circuit that's much it's, it's it's harder than than that. But I mean, a lot of things have you know. For example, the the EVM has, has this memory alignment. You know, it's a byte related, but then you read uh, 256 words or 256 arithmetics. Uh, you need to 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 deal with that in an efficient in an efficient way. Um, it's I would say is uh, during a year and a half that we have been working for this project, almost two years right now. Uh, it has been like uh, one two challenge per 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 week, uh, at least, and 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 solving. You know, that has been a huge uh, team effort to 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 solve all these uh, engineering challenges that uh, compose the, the ZKBM. Do you guys know that it's always possible to kind of transpose this? I mean, is there a a mathematical proof that you can kind of take any smart contract and kind of transpose it into, you know, an equivalent ZK circuit? Or, I mean, did you know it was an engineering challenge or was it also questionable whether it was doable at all? Possible. So mathematically speaking, possible it is. So there is no, no restriction for not being. The question is more how efficient. Uh, this is is me. Just as as a as a number, as just as I, I tell you one one anecdote, one 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 thing. Remember when we started the the system, we were discussing with a bit and 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 we were talking about uh, proving computation. We were talking in uh, we were measuring the you know, first estimations. We were measuring in in hours and the computation power were <laughs> were were measuring with. Uh, um, Lots of servers, you know, even we were talking about data centers at some point uh, uh, on that. Uh, at this point, building a, a proof of 10 million gas, it takes less than two minutes. Uh, this has been the improvement of, of this, but the, the, the challenge was not in a single server. Yeah. So that's, that's, uh, so that's, that has been the, the improvement that we made in these two years. This it has been mainly a fight about optimization, uh, optimization. And here is all the all the possible things that you can optimize, you know, from the mathematical perspective, the engineering perspective of how, the way you do it, from the programming perspective. If we are using vector vector instructions, assembly, uh, we try it also with GPUs. We try it with so it's like um, the, the, taking into account the cache, but taking also into account the, the different protocols. We went to the Goldilocks. This is one of the the things that make us improve a lot. You know, it's it's a lot a lot of things and a lot of improvements and a, and a lot of small details that when you're putting together is when you can have these times, but it's not, this is a result of, it's not a result of a simple thing. It's a result of hundreds of uh, engineering decisions and, you know, and engineering detail, details that when you put them together and you were just fine tuning all of them is when you are getting these, when you are getting these numbers. But we started, you know, the first expectations were, were huge. We were in the limit of uh, feasibility when we started. Okay, so literally grid and hard work and, you know, kind of optimizing like every single thing that you can optimize for. Exactly. That's, that's, been, that's been my job. Uh, actually, the job for, for the team for the last uh, two years. How, how big is the team? How many, um, how many people do you have on the team and what, what are their backgrounds? Are they mathematicians or cryptographers, computer scientists? All of them. 
We have a team of, of engineers that work uh, with Jordi in the prover in the CK part. That probably five six people. We have uh, some team working in the in the contracts protocol, like four people. We have uh, like seven people working in the client of the network. Uh, but we, as a Polygon, we have uh, contributions from many other teams, like uh, Polygon Zero, Polygon Maiden, uh, also broad Polygon teams. We have um, a big family uh, you know, working on this uh, with different profiles, from cryptographers to, to engineers. But uh, on project, I would define, as Jordi was saying before, it was uh, Jordi was doing a lot of research in the CK and the feasibility, feasibility of this implementation. We had clear ideas from a long time ago, probably one year and a half, but it has been one year and a half of improvements, of optimizations, and we are still working on it. So basically the team, the team is composed by engineers and they are doing an amazing, great job. We have some mathematicians, but this is an engineering project, mainly. I'm trying to understand the difference between the approach ZKVM is taking versus like something like what Starkware is taking through with Cairo Lamb. And what I understand is that ultimately any kind of uh, virtual machine is, is essentially defines a set of operations that it can do. Like these might be operations like add, subtract, multiply, right? Like simple operations all of us understand. But in the Ethereum machines case, there are also complex operations which are like take a hash of certain data or verify a signature or there's something which is called the jump instruction, which, uh, which does something which basically allows for loops to exist in the Ethereum virtual machine. So the Ethereum virtual machine has a set of operations that were chosen in the history of development of the Ethereum virtual machine maybe 2014. And, um, and the difference between your approach as, as, as Polygon versus star, something like Starkware is, you're saying, okay, Ethereum virtual machine defines these, I don't know, 128 or 150 set of opcodes. And we are going to take these opcodes and we are going to develop a system that can emit zero knowledge proofs for a chain of operations that are uh, that are using these opcodes whereas starkware is saying that actually let's define a different set of opcodes which are not exactly the same as that used in the evm and let's define those opcodes in a way that it becomes easy to write zero knowledge proofs uh, for them but it's a different set of opcodes and because now it's a different set of opcodes Ultimately, they need a different programming language, Cairo Lang, to also run on top of their virtual machine. Whereas in your case, because the set of opcodes is the same as Ethereum virtual machine, developers will be able to write in Solidity or Piper or any of these languages that they are used to. Right? Is is that is that, is that kind of like this core strategic difference? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's uh, that's. That are the different approach. The approach uh, you, you, you explain it is uh, Star Wars approach or even uh, Polygon Zero, for example, started also this, uh, the, well, uh, no, sorry, uh, Polygon Maiden started this approach. It's okay, let's build a, let's build like a new, new, new virtual machine. This is one approach. Uh, there is another approach that's, uh, for example, the one that uh, was used by Polygon Zero or that was is used for, for Matter Labs, for example, that's, okay, let's try to be compatible, but not compatible at top code level, but op uh, compatible at language level. So let's take Solidity and then you just uh, transpile it to uh, our own virtual machine, okay, or to LV. This is another approach. It was probably was the best approach uh, you could choose uh, Two, two years ago or three years ago uh, when it was started because, you know, was uh, doing an opcode compatible, uh, EBM opcode compatible had a lot of challenges in there. So this was a, another approach. And then the third approach that is, is the one that's, okay, let's, let's not do, 
not be compatible at language level, but be compatible at opcode level. So that means that this is the, the one that's closer to Ethereum. And this is, uh, this is the approach that, uh, the, the approach that we took, or from a scroll, people also took this approach and there is other, other teams that took this approach. There are different ways, different ways to approach the same problem. Uh, with uh, the, with different implications for the end users, you know the uh, uh, our approach is is theoretically it should be less efficient, but it's more but it's more uh, um, easy for the user. What's interesting, and here is the maybe the, the main thing is that uh, it should be more it should be less efficient, but actually it's even much more efficient than the other than the other systems. And here is I think here we are very uh, because you know all the all the all these improvements that we made were not like specific for what we were doing. It were specific to the how we build rollups itself. So the optimizations that we make, I think that this 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 creates us a lot of a, a big difference between the competitors because we have the best of all worlds. We have the easiness for the for the users. And at the same time, we are very, 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 uh, very optimal, even more optimal that we don't have the numbers because, you know, the competitors, we don't, we, we don't, they never publish a prover that it's, it, yeah, it's difficult to, to hard, but, but I mean, uh, um, uh, it looks like that we are much, much uh, more optimal that, uh, that, the, that, that the competitors. But this is actually quite, a little bit counterintuitive that it should be the case because it, normally in the history of programming and software engineering, you you have, you have languages that are like closer to English, easier to write, like a JavaScript or Python, and then you have languages that are much harder to learn and harder to write, like like a C. The advantage that the usually the harder to write thing gives is that it is efficient and uses less computational resources. And the disadvantage of JavaScript is it will use more computational resources. But I mean, one possible explanation would be that the competitors just haven't seen the optimization, uh, optimization to its end, right? So basically, if we kind of put Jordi uh, now on, you know, the competitors and say, Jordi, please optimize this, do you think you could get it to a more efficient point uh, than where ZKEVM currently is? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. But, no, yeah, because it's a, uh, it's a lot of it's a lot of things. For example, I don't know how we are writing a storage. This is not related. This is how we are computing the storage. This is not related to uh, being EVM compatible or not compatible. It's just how you structure the storage and how you uh, how you how you uh, create how you define the storage in a, in a way that's efficient. Okay, this is a lot of knowledge and testing and and th and, 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 and improvements uh, in in how we're writing the, the storage and this is this can be used in any in any so in in any of these architectures on that and this is an, an improvement that we made uh, uh on that but it's not but let's let's talk about the arithmetic optimizations again this is transversal so this is not like a specific uh to ethereum or how we are computing the ecdsa well, if you want to, if your system wants to have a CDSAs, then this is hard and we solve that. So if you see all these improvements that we make and we put them all together, so all these can be used in other systems that don't necessarily be uh, uh, Ethereum compatible. We created for Ethereum because this is was what, what was our goal, was, was our specification as engineering. Uh, but all this work that we make, it can be used uh, uh, in any, most of the works can be used uh, in other project in, 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 in transversally. And, and this is the cool thing of uh, open sourcing the, the, the code. It's like everything is in there. So all the knowledge is in there. Of course, it takes its time to be absorbed and to be understood and things. But there is a lot of knowledge that's in there that I'm sure that uh, other projects will, will, will use it in the, in the Ethereum space and outside Ethereum uh, space for sure. Mm. It's a lot of innovations, but it's not engineering. Eh? It's like the, the cool thing of engineering is that you can advance. Mm, it, there is like two, two things. One is the balance, and and when in engineering sometimes you need to choose between a balance. That's what the thing. Or the good engineering is when you don't need to be in this balance when you are advancing in both fronts, and this is the the real progress when you are creating things that are doing better, no matter what's the the variable that you are measuring. So, so Jordi, um, like you mentioned, okay, the, 
in this space today, all like three approaches exist, right? So one is, okay, let's define a new virtual machine. Downside, it will be a new language, which is like Cairo Lang. And let's try to build ZK, ZK provers that can do general computation that way. You have the approach where, okay, you have the EVM. Let's keep the EVM opcode compatible. And then let's build ZK proving systems on top of EVM. That's the second approach. There can be something intermediate, which is like, okay, let's build a, an EVM, which is, uh, let's build a virtual machine, which is similar to the EVM, but not exactly the same. But still in, in that kind of uh, virtual machine, you will still be able to write in Solidity, right? That, that kind of approach also exists. So this is happening because, of course, much of the um, intellectual energy of the ZK feed is going after these crypto problems. But will it be the case that in the future, there's a zero knowledge proving system for the JVM, Java virtual machine as, as well? Do you think in the future there will be a, a ZK prover system for uh, a language like Go or Rust uh, as well? or or is there something fundamentally hard about building ZK provers for JVM and Golang? Definitely. Well, well, you need to distinguish between the, the low level of codes and the high level languages. Okay. So in general, there are some intermediate representations like LVM or some YUL or, you know, other intermediate representations that Amika that are in the middle. But, uh, um, uh, the, the interesting thing is that what we did is we uh, created a processor that's equivalent to the EVM. The same way that we did a processor that's equivalent to the EVM, we could easily write a processor that's equivalent to WASM or that's equivalent to a uh, RIS-5 or equivalent to, uh, um, you know, to a ARM uh, processor uh, somehow. And then you can reuse the stack. Actually, for example, there is a very interesting project. It's called RIS-0. That it's, like, it's a RIS-5 emulation. Okay? And they are just, you know, you can have a program that's written for RIS-5. You can write that in Rust or in C and you compile and then uh, you compile for for RIS-5, so you are using all the all the compiling stack and then you are running there. These things are, uh, you, you can definitely do it. Actually, we did that for the EVM, for a specific processor, is the Ethereum processor. But the same way that we did for a processor, we can do it for any other, any other uh, processor. This, of course, here again is how efficient it is, uh, but it's definitely possible. And this is the, the way it's, uh, I think this is the way it's going, the, 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 you know, the ZK space. So ZK space is, so every time uh, mm, writing ZK circuits is, is going to be, is, is, every time that the thing is going to be written more in C or in Rust or in, in high level language uh, that in, or even in Solidity, that in, that in low level circuits, you know, with Circom or, uh, or, or, or things like that, eh? or Noir or even, you know, this is like a, I would say this is kind of bright. So uh, doing electronics and the other is just doing real programs. So until now, the ZK was about doing electronics. We were just uh, doing uh, some gates and putting them together and writing, you know, just doing some electronics that do maybe a specific calculator or do something that's a specific. Now we are creating processors. We are start creating processors and then you are not going to... You, are, you will not need to write electronics. You will just read programs for these processors. And this is how is how is how is evolving. Okay. And the ZKVM is a clear uh, milestone in, in in that direction. Also, would like to add that uh, all this uh, technology to build this processor that Jordi is describing is also a contribution we have in the repositories of the project. Uh, all of this tooling is open source. Um, also, as Jordi was saying before, uh, we had this kind of uh, big work of optimization to build our system, like feasible system to, to prove Ethereum. Uh, all these ideas are just out there and probably uh, other teams will just reuse or catch up, which is fine, perfectly fine for us. Uh, the, the point is that we get from the situation that we had initially estimating data centers to prove uh, this this protocol. We have now a single server and the costs we have today, they are so so irrelevant 
that we feel that this is going to become kind of a super mainstream technology in many in many lines. So um, the optimizations we have implemented and the ones we have in the pipeline and the backlog to to continue doing, I feel uh, very very soon there will be more processors running on CK, and uh, we are super happy about this too. So basically, the entire development is a little bit reminiscent of um, the history of chip design, right? So basically, if you think back to like the, uh, I mean, not literally think back because none of us are old enough to think back that far. But basically, if you look at how everything kind of evolved, we had like um, these integrated circuits. And in the beginning, the integrated circuits, they always had one very particular um, function. The program was kind of hard coded into the chip itself. And only with um, the uh, the um, advent of general purpose CPUs that could kind of do anything that kind of opened up this entire space for building in software kind of in order to kind of make a program. You, you no longer had to build a new chip circuit. You could just kind of reprogram a general purpose one you already had. Um, and obviously, it's not optimized for any particular thing, uh, but it still works well enough that you can kind of use it and kind of the advantage, the advantages you gain and kind of speed and execution and agileness and so on. Those kind of trump the fact that it's not optimized for any one particular thing. And if you look at kind of how this entire space has evolved, like in the last probably like decade or so, high-end um, uh, tech companies have actually started building um, single-purpose chips again, right? I mean, so basically the entire GPU thing that kind of, I mean, that's, I mean, that obviously that was kind of for gaming and shaders and whatever. And kind of th this has been taken over by the AI crowd to a large extent. But even kind of if you, if you look at CPUs, um, for instance, Apple now designs its own chips. And I mean, this is just so it can optimize for very specific things. Samsung does the same thing. And I think other high-end um, tech companies do the same. Do you actually see this happening in the zero knowledge space as well? Or do you think this will happen that there will be certain sets of applications that will run on very specialized ZK infrastructure that is not general purpose, but purpose built for this particular, so things I'm thinking about are, for instance, you said that one of the very first things you built was a payments protocol, because obviously payments is simple. It's kind of it's kind of like you could do it on, uh, uh, you know, state channels or something. It's pretty that you don't need like a generalized state or anything. You don't need you know smart contract computation. Um, do you think we will see the rise of, um, you know, zk? Um, machines that can only do very, that are optimized for very specific sets of applications? I mean, uh, uh, definitely yes, but uh, I think you explain it very, very good. Uh, so, but we are, we, we, we can say that we're in the sixties right now in the processor era. Okay. So, and you are talking the GPUs that's in the two thousands, uh, at least uh, the, the thing. So we are still, so we are still, we, we, right now we have a lot of uh, specific circuits, but it's not because we want to optimize them because sometimes it's the only way to do it. It's like in the 60s. So, so there are, you want to do a calculator and you either do it uh, an electronic or it's, it's impossible. You cannot do a processor, okay? So here right now, for example, in the Starks, I could I, I can compare Starks with the gate arrays, okay? So it's like, okay. It's not that you are writing processor. We have a gate array, so you can have uh, uh, you can you can write you know just uh, hardware in in gate array terms, and there is a kind of a compiler and and puts that. Okay, so this is Stark and Peel and all this technology we create. Okay, we created a we create a processor, but you know the processors is that we are very early in the technology still. So the processors that we are building right now they cannot do things. So you, for example, then the quantity of clocks that you can run in a proof is not that much. So it's like we are running uh, a million clocks or something like that. Okay, a million, you know, uh, a million clocks. How many thing? How, how, how much computation you can do in eight million clocks? If you have an eight megahertz uh, processor, this is just one second of processor in a proof. Okay, and and right now we are 
three, four gigahertz. Eh? So just to just to to see where we are in the processors in the processor setup. So when you have these, you know, these limitations in the electronics, because we are still have these uh, theoretical limitations in these uh, in the zero space, we are much better than uh, uh, three years ago. But we still have we are starting to do this, and that means that you need to do things that are specific. For example, if you are trying to build a ZKVM with a normal RIS zero processor, for example, RIS five processor uh, uh, with uh, you know, things that RIS, you will, you will. The problem is that the, you can do it, but the program will be too complex and will not fit. Uh, will not fit well. You know, it's like you are doing a, a huge program and you are trying to run in a very very old processor. It's like you are trying. You are building. Um, I don't know a Linux operating system, and you are trying to run it in a Z, Z, Z80. Uh, processor, you know, it, 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 I mean, it, it just doesn't fit. You know, you need more memory. You need more. Uh, you need to execute more things. So we are in, in in this in this stage still. So okay, we start having processors right now. Writing processors is is possible. These processors are doing amazing things if we compare of what we had until the point. But it's still a long long run to do. It's like I'm going to a generic. You know, this uh, commoditization of the of the processing power. We are not there yet, okay? And so at this point, I would say, yes, it's gonna be, speci- it's still gonna be a specific processors, but it's not, but but that's because, you know, if you want to have a lot of payments, you, it's difficult to do it in a normal processor. So we probably will see this phase, you know, that everything goes to a generic and maybe at some point it's in specific, but we need to wait. In the, in the kind of the processor, we need to write like 40 years, okay? So for that to happen. Crypto, okay, bro, things go faster, but but it's it's a still long run. Forty regular years are maybe like seven crypto years. Also, in my opinion, besides technology, there's the we are in, the, in a very uh, let's say intense exploration phase. Probably will need more stable use cases to make these uh, you know specific purpose uh, circuits you know, may be worth it because. Uh, if the generic, as, as you described, this wave of generic processors will happen, I probably will be covering a lot of use cases and will have flexibility for the apps. So probably with some of the apps being stable, it will make sense again to, to come to this application specific circuits. I want to cover one final um, topic regarding um, the ZK EVM itself, and that's kind of audits. So basically, if you look at the different um, approaches that we have for um, zero knowledge rollups, um, what are the implications for audits and how much basically, you, you said that um, a lot of the complexity you kind of abstract away from the user. Does this also mean that um, you abstract a lot of the auditing requirements away from the user? Because I mean, m- all of us, most of us don't read bytecode, maybe Jordi, you do, but um, probably n- no one in the entire world reads ZK uh, circuit bytecode. I mean, this is just, how do you audit this? And how, how does this compare between the ZK EVM and the other ZK rollups? Look, the, 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 nice, the nice thing of, 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 of this is that uh, our approach of this architectural approach is based on layers. Is you explain it very well. We have the hardware layer, you know, which is, uh, we have the, what we call it, the pill, then we have the processor, then we have the ROM, and then we have the program that's, so the, so we have the problem in the ROM. And this is our like different layers. And th- this is, this has been very good also for developing because we can have like different, uh, uh, parallel teams, some of them doing hardware, so others doing software, you know, just see, you can see it that way. Of course, it's not hardware, eh? it's, it's uh, the arithmetization uh, on these things. But this is again happens with them with the audits. In the audits, you can assume that the low layer is okay, and then you are just checking these basic layers. So this allows us also to structure the, 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 uh, and divide and conquer, uh, uh, from the audit, uh, from the audit front. We have been auditing the system for the last uh, three months uh, right now with different uh, teams, uh, different audit auditors that they went really deep. Uh, I'm even very surprised on how deep these auditor teams uh, just uh, went there. But again, said that um, it's a new, you know, it's a new, um, it's a new technology. It's a new stack, and there is a lot of code. Uh, that needs to be checked because you need to check the hardware, the software, and you check all the pieces. And if there is just a single, 
uh, a single piece that goes wrong, you know, everything can go wrong. Also, again, said that we are also putting the, the measures in the smart contract level, in the higher level, so that if there is something wrong in this uh, prover system, um, we can fix it, or, the, it, or at least the users don't, don't, don't lose phones. Okay, and this is a, here is a, would say a deployment or security technology that's uh, uh, put on that without uh, losing decentralization or without losing too much decentralization on that. It's a balance here, but it's 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 important and um, it's also important that these systems to, to start and and see how they work and and and, and see in real in real in, in the real world uh, how they perform and and the issues that may happen and so on. But this is this has been the 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 the, the, the work of the team for the last three months. Yes, we we are doing the audits in our system, um, but uh, the advantage of our approach is that the users, they don't need to re-audit their, ap their applications. They're using the same smart contracts and technology. They are running on Ethereum or Polygon POS or other chains. Uh, so our approach is kind of a clean for them and there's no transformation of smart contracts, anything. So once our audits are good to go, users are, let's say, not uh, implied in any audit. One final question slash ver verification. So in the early days of zero knowledge proving, we had systems that required trusted setups, the most famous of which was probably Zcash, where there was a trusted setup ceremony. I think 30 or 40 people came together, generated some randomness together, and you had to trust at least one of these 30 or 40 people would destroy their part of the randomness. For the system to be secure, the first one was nine. Per the first, the first one was was nine persons. The first one was nine persons. Okay. And the second one, I think, was like eighty-four or something like 84. that. Eighty-four. Okay, so you have to trust one person in nine to behave correctly for the first one, and one person in eighty-four to behave correctly in the second one. Is there anything like that in your system? Uh, let's see. Uh, yes and no. Okay, so uh, so we are planning. We are planning to run, to put the the so the we, we, it's a flunk. Uh, so the last the last part of the prover. So well, first, so all the all our prover is based on Starks. Okay, Starks don't require to set up at all. Okay, and this is like ninety five percent of the proof. There is a last stage in the prover is right, that that we convert a Stark into a Snark. Okay, so. Here is just a normal circuit, circuit program, and here we can use either, uh, we have three options here. We can use Gro16, Plonk, and Flonk, okay? Uh, we probably, we are gonna try to run with, uh, we run with Flonk, okay? We are pending because Flonk is very new, is a very new protocol, and we are running a, an audit uh, on the implementation of Flonk and on Flonk itself, so that we are sure that this is uh, correct, okay? If there is nothing strange in the audit and we see that everything is okay, we are going to run it in, we are going to put it in Flonk. If there is something, we have a kind of a backup plan, which is run it in Gross 16. Okay. Let me explain you uh, what are the difference. Okay. Uh, 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 gross, so uh, Plonk and Flonk, they require what's called a universal setup, universal trusted setup. Okay, that means it's a ceremony that's uh, run once and uh, anybody, and, and then you can use it in any circuit on that. That's why it's called universal. This ceremony, for example, in Ethereum, it's a, has been a ceremony that there is more than 100 persons, uh, contrib more than 100 contributions and very trusted people here from the Vitalik Kobe, uh, Barry Whitehead. So you can see the list, uh, which is, is like a lot of trusted persons. And it is like a, it's, you know, it, it's, in Hermes, I think was like something like 70. And currently I think it's something like uh, 100. You can, you can, you, you, you can check it because it's a public, it's a, it's a, it's a public ceremony. This is, I would say this is quite accept that this ceremony is okay. The problem is that Growth 16 requires uh, an, a specific ceremony. So for for the each circuit, so every time you do an application, you need to run a, uni, a, 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 a ceremony. You need to run a, a trusted setup. And this is a little bit annoying. And this is, uh, I mean, this is not, 
is a pain running these ceremonies. So our plan here is uh, we will try to run with Flong. If everything works with Flong, it's Flong, and we will use this universal this universal ceremony that's already run from the community. Uh, it's the same one. Uh, so uh, and uh, if the, if we have some issue here, maybe we we step back to to Grossistin. Maybe we'll run a, a small you know a small ceremony with some trusted with auditors and internal people and maybe some members of the community, but a small ceremony uh, because it's going to be a temporary ceremony. So it's going to be a temporary ceremony until we fix or we change to flunk or plonk uh, in case it doesn't it doesn't work. So this is a little bit uh, like, like a backup plan. But the idea is to go to to to, to flunk, which is uh, universal universal ceremony. And also the good thing of flunk is that uh, the verification cost is exactly the same, or it's very similar to the gross 16. So uh, we have the best of all worlds. The only problem of flunk is that the proving time is a little longer, that it's, uh, but it's just the last stage. So it's not that much. And uh, it's okay for us to, to spend this extra time. So this is the, this is the, yeah, this is the, the thing.